let's talk about one of the most misunderstood and most powerful tools in motion design, the motion graph. It's the thing that separates just okay animations from the ones that feel great. And whether you're using After Effects, Figma, Rive, Spline, or even Blender, graphs are everywhere. So in this episode, we're going to demystify motion graphs using After Effects as our playground. And specifically, we'll focus on the value graph because it gives you the clearest view of what your animation is really doing. Now, quick heads up, if you're opening the graph editor in After Effects and what you're seeing looks a little different from mine, it's probably showing you the speed graph. No worries. Just click this icon at the bottom of the graph editor to switch to the value graph and we're good to go. You know that moment when your animation technically works, but it still feels off? Yeah, that's where the graph comes in. The motion graph gives you visual control over time, speed, and value. It shows you exactly how your properties like position, scale, opacity are changing over time. And more importantly, it lets you shape how those changes happen. Here's how it works. The x-axis is time, just like your timeline. The y-axis is value, like the actual property you're animating. If it's scale, that could mean 100 or 200%. If it's position, that could mean 500 pixels down your comp. Let's show an example by animating a circle scaling from 50 to 100. Just two keyframes. Basic. In the timeline, that's just a straight line from A to B. But when you open the value graph, you can see how that value changes over time. Is it speeding up? Slowing down? Easing in or out? That curve tells you everything. Now by default, keyframes are linear, which means boring. Your animation moves at a constant speed like a robot on a treadmill. Hit F9 or right-click and choose Easy Ease, and suddenly the value graph gives you a curve instead of a straight line. That curve means your animation now starts slowly, speeds up, and then slows down again. Just like things move in real life. Now here's the fun part. Grab those curve handles and shape the motion however you want. A shallow curve means a slow start, a steep curve means a fast burst. You can create anticipation, overshoot, slow ins, slow outs, just by shaping curves. And the best part, you're doing all of this visually. You don't need to guess or type in numbers. You can literally see how your animation behaves. This concept of shaping motion with curves is everywhere. In Figma, when you set up a prototype and choose ease in or ease out, that's based on a motion graph. In Rive, the animation graph works just like this. In Spline, same thing. In Blender, there's literally a graph editor. Once you understand how to read and shape these curves, you can jump between tools easily because the motion language is the same. Let's take a bouncing ball. With linear keyframes, it drops like a rock, no bounce, no feel. Now tweak those curves in the value graph, give it a smooth dip before the fall, ease it out of the bounce and boom, it feels alive. You didn't even add extra keyframes, just curves. A few quick tips before we wrap. One, if your animation feels off, check the graph. It's usually the curve. Two, zoom in to edit details. Trust me, it helps. Three, don't chase perfection. Just go for motion that feels good. And four, undo is your best friend. Don't be afraid to experiment. So yeah, the value graph might look intimidating at first, but once you start using it, it becomes your motion design superpower. It's not just a feature, it's a mindset. And once you get comfortable with it, your animations will never feel the same again. That's it for this one. If this helped, consider subscribing for more. And if you want me to break down graphs in tools like Rive, Spline, or Blender, let me know in the comments. See you in the next one.